Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on uh, chemistry of life, which is basically your chemistry review for anatomy and physiology. So um, this is like the intro to the notes because you're going to have uh, specific notes about um, how we make macromolecules and then the four main types of macromolecules. But I felt like we needed to review a little bit of chemistry because I don't know how long it's been since you've been in a chemistry class. So just as a reminder, uh, all matter is uh, made of atoms. Matter is defined as anything that takes up space and has mass, and that's going to be composed of individual elements, and those elements are, are made of, of atoms. So elements are the simplest type of matter that exhibit a specific chemical property. There's only 98 naturally occurring elements. We're probably really only going to talk about like maybe 25, like over the entire course of the anatomy and physiology course, because most elements you don't actually find in high levels in your body. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then again, just atoms are the smallest particles of an element that exhibit the property of that element. And we talked about that last, last uh, unit notes. So let's look at uh, the elements that are found in the human body. So um, this is going to be like, if you're looking at this on the little embedded video, this is going to be like super small. So just pull it up and look at it bigger. Um, if you look at this, you'll see that 65% of the human body by mass is, um, is oxygen. Um, so that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because like most of the body is made of water and most of water's mass comes from oxygen. So like H2O, right? There's two hydrogens, but hydrogen has such a small mass when compared to oxygen. That's why it's coming from. It's not like most of your body is a gas. That oxygen is in other compounds, water, glucose, all the macromolecules we're going to talk about. Um, so you'll see oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen are the big ones, um, and then it decreases from there. And so there's a whole bunch of trace elements down at the bottom, but like vanadium, we're never going to talk about vanadium in anatomy and physiology other than like right now. That's it. Um, so those are the elements. Uh, I like that graphic. Uh, it's got a shot at maybe showing up on a quiz or on a test, um, like what's the most common elements. So let's talk about the difference between organic and inorganic molecules. So organic molecules are molecules that contain carbon, and that's normally what we've told you in the past, but it's more than that. It's that they've got carbon and hydrogen together in the same molecule. <clears throat> you can have um, inorganic molecules that contain carbon. And we'll talk about an example of that in a second. So organic molecules also tend to dissolve in water and other organic solvents, like, um, like an oil would be an organic solvent. Uh, and that water soluble um, organic uh, compounds are non-electrolytes. So like if I take something that is a organic molecule that dissolves in water, it's not going to be an electrolyte, meaning that if I take like a molecule that dissolves in water that is an organic molecule, it is not going to create ions and conduct electrical impulses. So examples of those would be carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. It says lipids on here, but I do want you to know that lipids are, are um, fats. And so fats are not really soluble in water, but they are soluble in other organic um, in other organic solvents. Okay, so um, that's it for organic. If we look at inorganic molecules, inorganic molecules um, usually don't contain a combination of carbon with hydrogen. Usually um, it's just going to be carbon by itself or there's no carbon present at all. So um, like I want to actually talk about an example of that right now. Carbon dioxide. CO2, right? Carbon is present, there's no hydrogen present. So carbon dioxide is an inorganic molecule. And usually when you take inorganic molecules and you dissolve them in water, they do form ions. Uh, and that's important because that's going to either change the pH or change the electrical conductivity of the solvent. Uh, and so the examples are water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and inorganic salts. So things like sodium, um, chloride, magnesium chloride, those are going to form um, ions in that water-based solution. And those, those ions become physiologically important because they dictate kind of how um, a lot of your body systems are going to work. 
So inorganic compounds, we're going to talk about some of them. I'm not going to talk about water and I'm not going to talk about oxygen because those are in the unit one notes on like things that are critical for life. And it's the same list over. So you can just look back at like why are water and oxygen important in the unit one notes. Uh, carbon dioxide, <clears throat> excuse me. Carbon dioxide is a waste product. Um, it's a waste product of metabolism. So it's specifically a waste product of cellular respiration. And it has to be removed through exhaling. But it's not like you just breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. The oxygen is being sent to all the cells in your body. And then through the cellular respiration reactions, you get carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And that is what's being removed from the body when you exhale. Um, inorganic salts are found in your body fluids, and they provide the body with sodium, chlorine, potassium, calcium, magnesium that are needed for metabolism and normal body function. <clears throat> they also help regulate water concentration, pH, blood clotting, and are crucial for nerve and muscle function. If you are electrolyte depleted, you're going to have some serious issues um, with your nerve and muscle function. And if you've ever heard somebody tell you to eat a banana, if you get like a leg cramp, that's kind of where they're going at. Um, when we get to the muscular system, we'll talk about why a banana might not actually be the best choice. But I mean, if that's what you got on the sidelines, it works. Uh, organic compounds. Organic compounds are the main source and building materials um, of the body. And they're also where we get our energy for cells. So we're using the organic compounds that we're going to talk about for the rest of this unit to go ahead and provide the building blocks for your entire body and also for all of the energy that your body uses. Um, they're mostly water soluble. Again, lipids aren't water soluble. Uh, they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Some of them only contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they all contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And normally, normally the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is close to two to one. That is the case in glucose, which is the molecule here, but it is not the case for all organic molecules. But if you see one that has carbon and then has a uh, uh, hydrogen to oxygen ratio of two to one, that's a, that's a pretty good sign that we're looking at an organic molecule. So that's it for the like super brief overview of chemistry of life. There are five videos left. Um, there's going to be instructions on what to do with those five videos. Uh, I, I do feel like you should watch all of them, um, but I'm providing you with a notes handout. So just kind of like jot stuff down on the notes handout that is like interesting. I want you to watch them. You will be accountable for knowing kind of the differences between them, but you don't need to memorize and take notes on every single little aspect of the four macromolecules. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and set up a tutorial time and let's talk about it.